for uh, talking with blackfilm.com. My name is Ellen. Um, and today we are discussing your film, Redemption Day. First of all, congrats on this film. Thank you, Thank you Ellen. I, I enjoyed it. Oh, I rather enjoyed it. And, and, and what a way to make a splash, right? You're back like you never left. Um, and mm -hmm. it was good to see you on that screen doing your thing and doing oh, it well. Yeah, so Redemption is not your typical um, hero saves the day film. It's a bit more nuanced, which I think is what kind of pulled me in. Um, and it was a unique way to present a foreign uh, based film. How did the script find you? And what were your initial thoughts about the role of Captain Bradley Paxton? Uh, I, uh, well, the, the director sought me out. Uh, you know, I still haven't asked him why, but uh, he, saw, <laughs> he sought me out and got in touch with my reps and uh, sent me a script. And there was someone also, a friend of mine that was in Morocco at the same time. So the director lives between Morocco and Los Angeles. And I think I, I had been living in Paris at that point. So I uh, so I read the script and I and I immediately connected because the character, you know, he has some flaws and he has a, a past and he has a history there. I thought that would be good because all too often we see maybe hero stories and there's no human frailties or there's there's no genuine qualities that we all carry within us, especially uh our men and women in the armed services they're coming uh they're coming with a great deal of uh history and they have a, a lot of experience with trauma and are dealing with ptsd so i thought that would be interesting to play a character that had some dimension and to put some of that depth in the performance yeah uh, to, to give him a human quality and it, it really did humanize him um and what i admired most about your character was how cool um, he was under pressure given the extenuating circumstances. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, he was so cool. There were times where I asked like, okay, at what point is he just gonna lose his mind that you know this has happened and now he has to go back into combat, yeah. um, into the place you know, that he's kind of dealing with all this trauma um, to save the love of his life. What sort of mental uh, preparation and, and combat training did you undergo to prepare for this role? That's always a difficult thing with me with uh, a, a kind of a combat fight situation because I have I've been blessed enough to know people in the service industry. I've known I have friends who is a Navy SEAL, I have friends who are Marines and Rangers, and they are after years of being on the force uh, in the services, they have a demeanor that is is unmatchable. They are able to deal with so much under pressure. And I guess that's just conditioning. Yeah. And so I was able to take two, two gentlemen in particular that I had become friends with and remained friends for such a long time. I, I was able to take their sort of character profile and their their behavior and kind of craft, craft it into this, this role. And for me, it was sort of a tribute to them because I appreciate them very much in my life. And they've helped me a great deal, deal with my own misgivings and my own growth. And um, one of the things that kept on coming up was how far do I go with right. dealing with all of this that's in front of me? Because me as Gary, I'd probably be freaking out. You know? <laughs> but these guys are just cool hand loops, man. They, they just handle and they just maintain a composure. The other thing that was very important to me was um, they both and all of the servicemen and another Navy SEAL that I've met that was working on a film set, they say the same thing. Once they come out of the, uh, the service and they're on the streets, they have a hard time dealing with people because yeah. these people have not been taught the certain value systems and the principles that they are taught to abide by and that they're conditioned with. And then once they go and work for another company with civilians, it's difficult because they're not really sure who they can trust, who may have their back. And that was something that I wanted to portray and keep keep very steady throughout the film, that this is an honorable guy and that uh, he is a man of his word. And uh, I wanted to show the contrast with uh, with people who are who are in different different levels of of uh office 
or or perhaps business people and and people who are civilians and a person who's who's been ingrained with a certain sense of honor principles and value systems and how to bring that across on screens so that was important for me to um to try to to portray in a way that was genuine yeah i i, I received all of that that's what i got from it um and you know in, in thinking about a, the captain that's the highest level in the military, isn't it? Or one of the highest? Um, one, it's 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 up there. It's not yeah. the highest, but yeah. Okay, it's one, okay. So, you know, as a captain, you do have to maintain a certain level of control under pressure. So it, it took me a second to understand that. And once I did, I then realized like, wow, this, this cool, calm, you know, role that you were playing um, speaks to who, you, who your character was in the yes. military, right? Um, yes. And so I, I don't know that I've ever seen a film that has shown such a realistic premise. Like I was afraid. I felt like I was watching something like real that had happened at some point. Um, Cause there was something very real about the kidnapping and the terrorist organization, which created a genuine connection to the story. Can you talk a bit about the motivation behind the film's plot and how it was working with our director Hisham Haji. Uh, Hisham was great to work with. Um, the thing that I love mostly about working with Hisham and the production crew was all, all too often we see films come to Morocco and are filmed by English directors or American directors. This is the first blockbuster film filmed by a Moroccan director. And at one point we, did a lot of filming. We had filmed most of our principal photography. And then we showed, uh, he showed us a cut. And I said, that was fantastic, the cut, because we we pretty much got everything, but there's something that was was missing because I was, I really love Morocco. I think it's one of the most beautiful places. And um, so he went back and he kept on filming some B-roll and, and different uh, shots of, because I, I guess, you know, sometimes it, it gets to be that you are so deep in the forest, you can't even see the trees anymore. Sure, yeah. And so he had admitted to me he had forgotten how beautiful his home country was because he was living in Los Angeles and he just goes to work. And he went back and had another love affair with his home country because it's absolutely gorgeous. We weren't able to obviously film in, 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 um, in Algeria. And... Um, Morocco and Algeria, they share a, a similar look. I hear that Algeria is even more beautiful than Morocco in some places because it really hasn't been touched by tourism. But they have a long history of dealing with, and what the things that he wanted to shy away from is because every time you see an American film, it's making Muslims look bad or the terrorists, which is actually not the case. You have a lot less terroristic acts in, in places like Morocco or in in, in uh, Muslim countries than you have in America. And that's kind of been a fact now. The people are very gentle and they're very, very beautiful and they're very, they're very with tradition. They're very uh, loving to their neighbor and they're very honorable people. But it's it was important to, to put that element into the film uh, as the antagonist, uh, Sami Nasiri does it amazingly well. Yes. Uh, he's very, very genuine, and to uh, and I believe he is of Algerian descent. And to to portray that in the genuine way, because there are some very, very dangerous sects of people there that we wanted to portray, but it portray in a real light that how it is. It's not all these people that are farmers and people living in the. It's just people that are that have uh, an agenda, yeah. and they have a personal agenda, and they're trying to win money or they're trying to create a sect in order to have some power to to control a. Uh, a mine or or some all kinds of different scenarios so it was important to portray them as what they are is is, is maniacal killers and um so we had a lot of different uh, experiences and one experience in particular was the director his very good friend that he grew up with she they both lost a, a friend who was a reporter in uh, i think they said Burkina Faso mm -hmm. and uh so they were dedicating that film to her and to wow. the experience that she dealt with with terrorism and with the terroristic act that took her life. So they were able to segue that into the film. And that may be the the 
experience that we dealt with that you you were mentioning that you that you felt it was felt real. Yes, absolutely. So they're coming from some life experiences there. Yeah, and I I did appreciate the um, contrast, like you mentioned, of the danger and the beauty, because I kind of found myself going back and forth um, and appreciating the beauty in the people, um, as well as uh, in Morocco. Um, so I, I did like that kind of going back and forth with my emotions and understanding, like, you know, there's a duality. Um, right in it and, and so that was kind of cool um there were three standout lines that i cannot get out of my head yeah. um and that's due to the weight that they carry the first one uh was respect her love for you which was the advice um from bradley's father ed played by ernie hudson um, while they were in the boxing ring um, which kind of made me go back to you know the ptsd and bradley's wife kate played by Savinda swan um, her concern for her husband. Um, mm. and, and hearing those words from Bradley's father, you know, it just kind of, you know, sunk into me like, wow, those, those are really deep. That's really deep. Yeah. 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 Um, I agree. And, uh, and the second line is keep your eyes open and your mind sharp. Again, from Ernie Hudson. Right. I, I think for me, that's when I realized like, okay, shit's about to get real. Because mm -hmm. dad, you know, and then understanding the edge was a former military man, is that right? Right, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So that's where that line comes from. Right, and then the last yeah. but not least, my favorite was my cause is worthy of my death. Mm. Yeah. That was so heavy. Yes, very. Yeah. And, and that, that was a line that really made me feel that um, that was a line that was translated from Arabic. And because, you know, the script was written by two, two men that were from that country, so right. for me, that it's a it's a very it's a very Arabic line that it felt like Absolutely. it was translated, which made it all the more poignant because he's really he's speaking to a Moroccan man when he's saying that, right? And so to be further understood, he's basically translating his 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 Rumi back to him, you know, his his traditional poetry back to him. Yeah, that, that those words for me just solidify the type of man. Bradley is right, yes. and the love that he has for his wife. And so I think I fell in love with that character all over again once I heard that line. Mm. Awesome, that's beautiful. <laughs> some good insight, thank you for yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. taking um, that with me today. You, you spoke about a bit about this earlier um, and I wanna hear more about your experience of the Moroccan culture and what mm -hmm. it meant to you and how it changed you. I'm learning so much. Uh, I just uh, arrived back from Morocco. I shot another film there about a month and a half ago. Oh, wow. And I, I flew into Atlanta about a month and a half ago, about uh, about 10 days ago. Okay. Um, I'm learning so much, especially during this film, because uh, I had to develop and speak uh, Arabic, but I had to speak a specific Arabic, that was from Algeria. Now, in Morocco, they speak a completely different Arabic. They speak traditional classical Arabic as well that you would find in Egypt, but in Morocco, they all mostly speak Darija, which is a mixture of Arabic and some Spanish and some African languages and some French even. So um, while I'm in Morocco, I'm learning Darija to get along with people and to get in a taxi and tell them where to go okay. or to eat. But in the film, I had to speak a very specific classical Algerian Arabic because they speak a very specific Arabic. And so I learned a great deal and I learned a great deal about uh, Islam and, and Muslim culture and the, the what they do before they pray and um, um, what they do while they pray and speak and being having a certain honor system because I don't, you know, one of the things that I always would tell my my friends who were Navy SEALs who had to do missions over in Afghanistan and, and I, Iraq were that, you know, I kept on reading about all of these amazing places and museums that held the first written tab tablets of the first written language that were in Iraq. The cradle of civilization in, in geometry is, is in Iraq and all of these places that we probably have never visited, right. but that hold so many keys to our history as a people that I wanted them to start going over the next missions that they went over and just start to look with different eyes about where they were. And it was really important to me because I was stuck on the set 
up in Valencia, California, and, and I couldn't be with them during this journey. And I kept on reading these National Geographic books about all this looting that was going on and all these things that were missing from our antiquities. And so when I went over finally and started working there, I had, it's probably, it's like that, it's like that destination that you've been waiting to get to, you know, and that you've been trying to, you've been talking about the, all these years. And so I wanted to really respect uh, this journey of this character and try to incorporate that more, that this character has been there so many times. He's done missions there so many times, but he's not just an American soldier just going over and just shooting up the place. He actually respects the people. He wants to protect the people. He wants the people to be in, in good health and have good fortune. So he starts to incorporate some of their language and he starts to learn some of their customs in order to behave in, in, in a respectful way, but also in order to, to really have his, his, his whole company be safe. And, and there's a certain affinity that, that African-Americans do have with Africans, but it only is when we communicate at a deeper level. So I wanted to incorporate that into a film. And at first, I think the director, it took a, a minute to, to kind of gather what I was, what I was, what I was getting at. Yeah. But then he, he caught on pretty quickly and we were able to incorporate more of that into the, the role. And there was some rewrites that took place and he really started to, oh, wow. to en engage in it and embrace it in a way that I was, I felt very blessed to be in that role, to be able to maybe, I'm not sure if we've seen that before and maybe, yeah. maybe Denzel Washington has played that when he was in Man of Fire and he's knowing the customs and the ways of the Mexican people. But this is, I think this is, I'm looking towards a new type of filmmaking that we can start to engage in these, these issues that I'm sure a great deal of arms uh, men and women of color are dealing with when they go into places that they have to do missions. They may be walking on the grounds of their ancestors, and so they they have to behave a certain way, even though their their first their first um, their their first um, mission is for their their armed service group, whether it be the army, the navy. That's their they have to do their job, but there's still the human part there that Which is so inevitable that will come out. It's super important, and that's what. For me, craft's a good character. We need that that struggle inside. You have to maintain yourself and your composure as a soldier. But there's also that human quality that's yearning to get out and to communicate with people. And it's all about relatability. Um, yeah. Film. And so, as, as long as we, you know, viewers can look at a character and and feel connected, I think job well done. You know, mm. on a deeper level. Um, so I, I loved the plot twist at the end uh, because I'd suspected something early on, but then I thought it was sorted out. So I'm glad I was right <laughs> that something was rotten in the state of Denmark and then that there could be a potential for a sequel. Is, is there, can you give us any intel on whether or not <laughs> a sequel? Well, I, like, I guess like any action film, we're always hoping for a sequel. Yeah. So I, I, I guess after January, we'll just have to see where, where, where the cards lay, you know, where, right. where everything is at. Uh, I know all of the, uh, the producers and the directors certainly want to keep, the, uh, keep it going and look towards a franchise. But uh, I think we just have to see, you know, and at this, uh, at this juncture with the, the markets so volatile and running at 20% of what it usually is, there's a lot to go up against. We're 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 yeah. dealing with a, a really steep hill, but um, you know, even with that, there's so many good people behind it, and we have such good good graces, and we're 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 just happy to to get get off in the races, you know, just get it going and yeah, see and, see what happens. And it was one heck of a cast, so I mean, yeah, great I, cast. I'd love to see that happen again. And Me see too. At the head of it, making it happen. Um, so, do you know my last question? Any upcoming projects we should look out for from you, whether it's in film or music? Well, there was another film that I did in uh, England. It's called Saints and Sinners. So look for that. I think it just okay. would, it just came out in December. It's a really strange, uh, dark comedy, and uh, by a, a very inventive English director uh, named uh, Sabas. And uh, that should be uh, on some streaming platforms. I 
put I posted some things up on social media. So okay. you can always check my uh, Instagram posts uh, about the films that I'm doing. Just recently, I just dropped into Atlanta to film some episodes of First Wives Club. Oh, nice. I'm um, playing okay. across from Michelle Buteau, who's amazing. And as you probably already know, that Jill Scott's on the show playing yeah. the other lead. And um, it's, it's a great, great cast and it's funny and I, I love comedy. So I'm looking forward to continuing that. I'm, I'm doing a little arc for them. So I'll be there doing a few shows for them. Congrats. And it's just, it's just great to go to work and laugh every day. You're here. And, and, and Ryan, uh, Ryan, Ryan, Michelle Bath is is all is plays the other the other third lead as well, right. the first wife. So I'm 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 looking forward to uh, mashing up with them. On I play a doctor, so okay. look out for that. I'm not exactly sure. I can't tell you when that premieres or when those shows premiere. I don't have that schedule. Yeah, I'm a huge fan of First Wives Club, so I will be on it. I'll know. <laughs> oh, um, and so what? How can people find you on uh, IG on social media? I'm on the Gary Dordan. Okay. Got it. Yes. Okay. So Redemption Day, it, it comes out January eighth on, yes. digi on digital and on uh, demand. Um, so just really quickly, what can viewers expect in a few short words? Well, they can expect a, a lot of action and a lot of uh, a lot of psychological thriller drama. Yay! And they can expect Ernie Hudson, Andy Garcia, myself, Robert Depper, Serena Swan to to deliver. Excellent, excellent. I can't wait for it to drop. Sammy Nasiri, Martin Donovan. Yeah, we got a good cast. It's a heavy hitter cast. Listen, yes. thank you so much for your time, for talking. My pleasure. Um, My pleasure. And enjoy the rest of your day, Gary. Thank you. Have a beautiful day. Thank you. Thank Bye. You.